we're going to start off by making ourselves a focaccia. It's going to be a focaccia with some rosemary and some tomatoes on. And um, yeah, and then we're going to talk about a little bit of the, uh, the science or the chemistry that's going on um, throughout this process as we put it together. All breads start off with flour. So we've got 500 grams of strong white bread flour here, which we're going to go into a bowl. And then we've got our yeast, which we're going to add to one side of the bowl. We've got some salt, which we're going to add to the other side of the bowl. And then what we're going to do, we're going to make a little hole in there. We're going to add a bit of olive oil, like so. And then we're going to have some water. So for focaccias, kia batters, they're a very high hydration dough, so it means it's got a lot of water in them. So it's, this one's going to be around about 78% hydration dough. So there's a lot of water to go in here. That, 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 that'll do for us, I think. So we have mixed the dough. Now we're going to put it into a oiled bowl and then leave it to prove for around about an hour, maybe a bit longer until it is doubled in size. So put a bit, bit of oil. Now I just want to give the dough a little microclimate for it to uh, do the proving now. So I'm just going to put a piece of cling film over the top of the bowl and then now we'll leave that to rise for around about an hour, hour and a half. Right then, so now that the time has come to deal with our focaccia dough, it's actually come right to the top of the bowl and the yeast has done its job. So we've got our, we our, our starch was in the flour that we had for our bread dough and that's a complex sugar. We have amylase comes from the yeast and that amylase is going to break down that complex starch into simple sugars which is then going to be used now to transform from our glucose into ethanol carbon dioxide and that's what's happening in the fermentation process. So I can smell this now, I can smell the alcohol, the ethanol coming off of this and you can see all of the bubbles that is, that is in, this, um, in this proven dough and that's all the CO2 that's been released from that process. So it's done its job and now we're going to put it into a tin we're going to shape this again. I would find with focaccia, it's really great to do it in the tin just to avoid mess. And then you're just going to make sure you're maximizing really great aeration in your dough. And then when it goes in the oven, you end up with a really lovely, nice spongy dough. Right, so we're going to pop this into there. And then now I can just begin to sort of shape this, just push it out a little bit so that it just reaches the edges of the tin. So we'll leave that now to do one more proof for around about half an hour, 40 minutes. Our oh, catcher has had its sort of second proof now. And you can see it's now beautifully just filled our tin. And you can see the bubbles on it now, really nice big. You want big irregular air pockets for a focaccia because you want to be able to cut it open so there's really big pockets. So not what we're going to do now, we're just going to finish it off with a little bit more olive oil and some tomatoes and then some rosemary and some salt. That'll go in the oven now at gas six, which is 180 fan or 200 no fan for around about 25 minutes, half an hour. And here is our finished focaccia. Looks wonderful. Nice golden colour. And you can already, you can see from these big lumps here, we've got great irregular air pockets in there, so it's going to be delicious.